Thank you for your interest in AJO Case of the Mouth. I am Serge Stedip, professor in the postgraduate program in orthodontics at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. In this presentation, I'd like to share some key points associated with orthodontic treatment of mandibular incisor anomalies. Firstly, I'd like to introduce my co-authors, my colleague Dr. Shikito, professor of orthodontics, Dr. Jansson, professor of orthodontics and my mentor, and Dr. Lemansk, postgraduate student in orthodontics. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. In general, dental anomalies produce intermaxillary tooth mass discrepancies and detrimental effects on the occlusal relationships. In this case report, Mandibular incisor anomalies included left lateral incisor agenesis and ectopic eruption of a smaller shaped right lateral incisor. Three options were suggested to treat the mandibular incisor agenesis. First option, extraction in the opposite arch, but this option could produce undesirable soft tissue profile in this patient. Second option, implant rehabilitation, but the patient's age prevented this approach. And third option, forward movement of the mandibular teeth. However, a left than ideal intercuspation can be predicted with this treatment alternative. Thus, the treatment plan was to maintain the initial class 1 relationship without extraction or implant rehabilitation, dissipating the anterior tooth mass discrepancy by a set of clinical procedures. It's well known that maxillary and mandibular incisor stipping have significant impact on the arch length, overjet, overbite, and molar relationship. In fact, compensatory mandibular incisors labial and maxillary incisors palatal tip may have undesirable effects during class 2 camouflage treatment, such as incomplete closure of the extraction space, cusp-to-cusp -cusp relationship, and head-to-head -head incisor relationship. Similar undesirable occlusal results may also affect class II surgical treatment if pre-surgical incisor decompensation is not performed. However, compensatory positioning of the incisors and its consequence on the occlusal relationships is not always disadvantageous. In this case, intentional changes in arc length and width were performed to mitigate the effects of tooth mass discrepancies on the occlusal relationships, such as increased overjet deep overbite and anterior transverse interarch discrepancy. Compensatory labial tipping of the mandibular incisors was obtained during leveling and alignment, space opening for the ectop right lateral incisor, and overbite correction. These procedures increased the mandibular arch length and the intercanine width. Compensatory palatal tipping of the maxillary incisors was obtained after interproximal enamel reduction and the space closure, decreasing the maxillary arc length, intercanine width, and the intermaxillary tooth size ratio discrepancy. Thus, compensatory mandibular incisors labial and maxillary incisors palatal tipping were crucial to mitigate the tooth mass discrepancy associated with the mandibular incisor anomalies. In addition, Customized maxillary canines palatal and mandibular canines labial torx were performed to produce a fine intercanine width adjustment, resulting in a canine protected occlusion. At the end of treatment, excellent occlusal results, balanced soft tissue profile, and pleasant smile aesthetics were obtained, besides a high degree of patient satisfaction with the achieved results. 18 months follow up photographs show a stable occlusal and statical results. Three key points should be taken into account to obtain good occlusal results in similar cases compensatory positioning of the maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth, interproximal enamel reduction of the maxillary anterior teeth, and restoration of mandibular incisors with reduced crown width. I hope this case report can be helpful in dealing with similar cases. Thank you for your kind attention.